Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are uh, we in the session number three. Uh, we are going to have session number four tomorrow, and we are going to end the week number three, and then we are going to have four more days, and then we are going to end the course. So we are going to end the month. So we are almost, almost, almost done with this um, course or this module. And if we can say something about uh, this, um, this process is uh, the next thing. Estamos casi a punto de terminar lo que es el módulo, así que los, se nos pidió que les recordáramos que ya está el proceso de reinscripción. Si usted no se ha reinscrito, tiene que hacerlo en estos días porque se termina el 4 de octubre. Así que si no lo ha hecho, tiene que hacerlo en estos días y también si no ha completado o no ha trabajado en las actividades de la plataforma, también tiene que hacerlo porque ya la otra semana terminamos el jueves de la otra semana, esperemos que estemos terminando ya lo que es el módulo. Así que tienen hasta el 4 de octubre para reinscribirse a lo que son los módulos para que pueda continuar con su proceso y si no lo hace para esa fecha, pues eh, no va a poder continuar. Se supone que se va a iniciar aproximadamente el 10 de octubre el próximo módulo, así que tienen que hacer su reinscripción en estos días. Because maybe we think that we have a lot of time to do the things, but at the end, we are going to see like, oh, it's almost the, the last day. So we need to do it on time because we need to do some things. And you know what is the process. So that is not the first uh, time that you did something like this. Excuse me, teacher. Uh, mañana sí hay clases, ¿verdad? Yes. Para reponer el día que se perdió con el 15 de septiembre. Exactamente, vamos a reponer lo del 15, que iba a ser para el 16, no fue el 16, pero ahora sí, lo vamos a tener. Ok, el día de y supuestamente hasta el día de mañana ya esta debería de ter estar terminada la sección número 4. Exactamente, porque como, bueno, si ustedes lo terminaron para este día, mucho que mejor, pero si no, tendrían que hacerlo para mañana porque vamos a seguir trabajando mañana esta semana. Ok, uh -huh. creo que hay varios de los compañeros que tienen dificultades con algunas partes de la de la plataforma. Ok, entonces, antes de comenzar con la segunda parte de los comparativos en superlativo, los que tengan problemas con la plataforma pueden decirlo en este momento, cuáles son los ejercicios con los que tienen algún problema y los resolvemos en este momento. Because it's better to do it on time. Tell me, Fátima. Eh, teacher, yo tengo dificultad en lo, ahorita está en lo de, en la sección 5, okay. en lo de going to, eh, en el segundo ejercicio me parece. Ok, let me, let me eh, go to the platform. Voy a entrar a la plataforma para ir buscando los ejercicios e irles diciendo más o menos por dónde vamos y así ir leyendo los ejercicios para que ustedes me digan en cuáles son los que tienen el problema. So let me see. Vamos a ver si puedo entrar porque me dice que no. Okay. Give me a moment. I am accessing to the platform. So, section number five. Number five. Exercise two, or part number two. Exam, creo yo que es la parte que tiene problemas, Fátima. 
Ajá, en el, en el exam. En letter B. So, the, in this case, is the midterm. Es el examen ya final. Epsan, ajá. Ok. Ah, no, no. Yo, bueno, yo tengo dificultad en la, en la sección 5, pero como en el... En, unos, en las secciones siempre hay como pequeños examencitos, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Como en el segundo examen, donde habla del, 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 del present, present continuous en B going to. Ok, let me take to going to. What your with present continuous? Because we have the first one that is the 5.4 that in this case is complete the invitation. Complete las invitaciones con el presente continuo. Sí. En esa. Ok. ¿Cuál de los ejercicios o en todos los ejercicios? Um, no, en la primera parte ya lo, ya lo pude solucionar. Okay. Esto es como parte en la dos. última parte. Ajá, en la parte 2. It says, let me see. In the part number two, it says complete the response with be going to. Use the verbs in brackets. Tenemos que utilizar los verbos que ya nos presenta ahí. Y dice el primero, I be here on Saturday, but not Sunday. Let's try and go on Saturday. En ese caso, usted puede usar la contracción, la, la apóstrofe M, I'm going to be. I'm going to to be here on Saturday. Voy a estar ahí el, y tenemos el día, ¿no? I'm going to be. Esa es la del número uno. Then it uh -huh. says, well, my father and we have visit. visit. My brother at college is going to visit. My father is going to visit. So, mm. en este caso, usted se lo va a escribir is going to visit, completo, no se le, porque ya tienen, ajá, porque como ya tienen el verbo entre paréntesis, a veces no lo ponemos, pero en este caso lo tienen que poner completo, is going to visit. Mm, okay. En el número tres, sorry, I can't, I work overtime tonight. I'm, otra vez con el apóstrofe, I'm going to work, y si no le funciona, pone completo el am. I'm going to work. Completo. I'm going to work. No se lo va a olvidar poner el, el verbo porque si no se la va a tomar como mala. Y la número cuatro. Uh -huh. Can we go to a late show? I stay at the office till seven. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. I stay. Mm -hmm. Ok, sí, el, entonces ahí el, digamos, el verbo queda en la misma, de la misma forma. No, lo no se le agrega como, el, no, okay. no se le va a agregar nada. Queda igualito así como está en el paréntesis. Lo único que va okay. a hacer es agregar el, el going to o el, el, lo que le esté pidiendo. Porque en este caso, como es el going to, el que, el que estamos utilizando, el verbo uh -huh. ya no se va a tocar. Queda de la misma forma que está entre paréntesis. Ok, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Someone else? Alguien más que tenga problemas con la plataforma? Or with some exercises? Tell me, Irma. Yo tengo problemas en la sección 4, el 4.13. 4.13. Okay, I'm going to the section number 4. Let me see. 4.13. Okay, en ese caso, el 4.13 es escribir la pregunta o las preguntas para las respuestas que ya aparecen ahí. We are going to use how, so I know that we are, um, we didn't learn that topic, but we are going to do it tomorrow. That is kind of uh, funny. 
Lo vamos a ver mañana el tema del how, pero como ya estamos avanzando, vamos a explicarlo. Tenemos que empezar las preguntas con how. Y obviamente dice ahí mismo que lo tiene que, eh, que escribir con mayúscula. La pregunta siempre va a iniciar con mayúscula porque a veces cometemos el error de no ponerle las mayúsculas. Y tenemos que cerrarlo con el signo de interrogación. So, tenemos ahí four, four answers, cuatro respuestas. In the number one set, Angels Falls is 979 meters. Nos está diciendo cuál es la altura que tiene esa, esa parte, ¿verdad? Los Angels Falls. So, ¿Cuál sería la pregunta correcta para esa respuesta? How high, how high is angels fall? How, de cómo, high, de alto, is, del verbo to be, angels fall, el nombre completo, angels fall, question mark. How high is angels fall? Y le pone la question mark. Y esa es la pregunta. Ah, ok. Gracias. Number two. Nos está diciendo que California, California tiene acerca de, y nos dice cuántos kilómetros. O sea, estamos hablando de kilómetros en este caso. Aquí ya no sería high. En this case is how big. How big is California? Question mark. How big is California. Number three. This is talking about el río Nilo. Estamos hablando del río Nilo y nos dice igual, kilómetros. Solo que en este caso no nos está diciendo kilómetros cuadrados ni nada por el estilo. Y como estamos hablando de un río, más o menos sabemos cuál palabra vamos a utilizar. En la pregunta, how long? How long is the Nile y ponemos el nombre del río al final con la question mark. Then we have Washington DC gets up to about 32 degrees Celsius. Aquí nos está hablando de la temperatura de la temperatura que tiene Washington DC y nos dice que en el verano. En este caso vamos a poner nosotros en nuestra pregunta how hot de caliente. How hot is Washington DC in the summer? How hot is Washington DC in the summer? En este caso, siempre tenemos que poner los nombres de las ciudades con mayúscula. Por eso también a veces nos salen malas. Así que fíjense bien cómo van poniendo los nombres de las, eh, de las ciudades. En este caso, Washington DC, el, lo del Nilo tiene que ir con N mayúscula. California con C mayúscula, Angels Falls igual A mayúscula, F mayúscula, para que no nos las tome como incorrectas. So, I don't know if you are. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Someone else. Aprovechen este momento para preguntar. Someone else, or we are okay with the platform. Well, yo no he podido hacer, pero el examen. El meter. Ajá. Guay, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué no lo he podido hacer? Porque no me sale ninguna de las cosas. Pero el, el C, no, el M falta y el C. Lo que no le parece son como las, el, los audios. Ok. Mm. El A. Let's see. B. C. D. En the F, el, el artículo del F. ¿Le aparece el artículo de la, de la parte F? Mm. 
porque hay un audio en el A y hay un artículo en el F. Sí, eso sí me aparece y ya lo hice, pero es que no he podido hacer esto. La B. B. Esa es la que no he hecho. Let it be. Ah, es put the word in the correct order to make sentence. Es poner las palabras en orden. Tenemos, mm -hmm. vamos a ver. Number one. What do you plan do tonight? Plan to do. Ahí lo único que le falta en medio es el to. Plan to do. En la número uno. Plan to do. En la segunda. Es que aquí es solo agregarle como el, el to a la mayoría. Eso es lo que me pasó a mí, que el tú no lo había puesto y eso me provocaba. Y casi prácticamente todas las respuestas llevan el tú. Exactamente. Ahí todas le vamos a poner el tú. Por eso vamos a poner las tres palabras. Eh, plan to do en la número uno. Número dos. Want to stay. Want to stay. Number. I mean. Yes. Because it's I and B. En el número dos, en A is going, en este caso sí vamos a cambiarlo. Going to do. Y es con ING. Going to do. En B es would. Would. O puede poner apóstrofe T. Would to have. To have. Number three, hope, hope to do. Y en letter B, apóstrofe D, love to travel. Love to travel. Okay, now I think that we are okay or are someone else that have problems? Okay, we are going uh, to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. And we are going to have some examples that we are going to do today. And then we are going to see more examples about the superlative and comparative adjectives. Because we are going to end that topic today. And uh, like I was saying, tomorrow we are going to see the construction of the questions with how. And also we are going to see some examples of uh, questions that we can make to the other people that are like funny questions or that we can use in some uh, activities when we are meeting a new people or a new group or we are like having some uh, meetings and we need to have like icebreakers uh, because in that case we make like a very um, use of the time that we have in the meeting. But we are going to see that topic tomorrow. And now we are going to continue with the adjectives. First, we are going to have two exercises in which I'm going to write some uh, sentences. And you are going to um, see in the first one, what is the form or the adjective that we are going to use for that sentence. And in the second one, you are going to correct the adjective that I'm going to use. Then you are going to have like, a break because I'm going to write some examples and you are going to have time to take a deep breath and to take a break. And then we are going to have another exercise. So we are going to begin with exercise number one. Then we are going to have exercise two and then we are going to have like a couple of minutes in which we are going to just hear the examples and all other things. And then at the end, we are going to have like another exercise in which we are going to put in practice the use of the adjectives in superlative form and in um, comparative form. So let's see. 
we are going to complete the uh, correct comparative or superlative adjective based on the adjective provided in parentheses. So you are going to have the, uh, the adjectives into parentheses, and then you are going to tell me if the sentence is comparative or superlative. And we are going to see what is the correct form of the adjective that we are using for that specific sentence. But I'm going to write the 10 sentences um, right now. And then you are going to have like a couple of minutes to read the sentence and to find it is superlative or comparative. And then I will ask you to help me with the uh, correct form of this first uh, exercise. Then after that, we're going to have the second activity. In this case, you are going to uh, read this sentence and you are going to find the, the mistake and you are going to tell me, oh, in this uh, sentence number one is this and this and this. So we are going to begin with exercise number one.
Okay, we have the 10 sentences. And the first thing that we need to do is to understand what is the situation that we are seeing in the sentence. For the first one, we're talking about the Burj Khalifa building in Dubai. That is the, and we have the adjective tall, building in the world. So you need to see the elements that are involved in those sentences. And you need to see what are the elements that represent the comparative sentences. And then you need to identify what are the elements that represent the superlative sentence. Because seeing that elements, you are going to see what are the form of the adjective that you are going to uh, use for this sentence. So I will give you a couple of minutes to read the sentence and to find the elements of the superlative and comparative form. And then I'm going to ask you the correct form of the adjectives and I'm going to write it on the document. So right now you have like, uh, I think four or five minutes to read the sentence, find the elements, and then we are going to uh, write the correct form of the adjective. So the times begin now.
the uh, we with this uh, sentence, so we are going to begin with the answers or the or solving the uh, exercise. So for the first one, the Burj Khalifa building in Dubai is the tallest. Tallest. Good, tallest. The tallest. Perfect. So we are going to change here, and we are going to because in this case we are not comparing anything. We are saying that is the number one. So, second one. Okay. What is? Bigger. 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 Good. In this case, we are making a comparison between two different uh, dogs in this case. Bigger. Number three. Higher. Highest. Yes, highest. Mine blew the highest. Number four. More expensive. Good, more expensive. Number five. Worse. No. Worse. Worse. Worse than the 100%. Number yes. six. Most important. Good. More, More important. important. Number seven. Mm. Happier. Happier than doing homework. Number eight. Cheaper. cheaper good cheaper or cheapest cheapest ah, cheapest number nine are they, Ay, me quedé. <laughs> are they better or best it's better best best in this best. case it's oh. best Son las mejores, no tienen comparación. Okay. So in this case, it's best. And the last one, bumpy. Okay. Bumpy are good. Because we are making a comparison between driving on dirt or driving on asphalt. So in that case, it's a comparison. Okay. First activity done. We are going to see the second one. And in this case, um, we are not going to have the adjectives in parentheses. In this case, I'm going to write the whole sentence. And you are going to find the mistake or the error on the sentence. And you are going to tell me uh, what is the error and what is the correct uh, way to write that adjective so we are going to mark the mistake and then we are going to rewrite the sentence so the same thing i'm going to write 10 sentences then i will give you five minutes to read the sentence find the error and then we are going to rewrite the sentence so i'm going to write the 10 sentence right now and then i will give you your five minutes so let's see Excuse me, teacher, ¿le entendí que tenemos que escribir la que en las que nos equivocamos? No, I'm going to write the sentence. Yo la voy a escribir. Ah, okay. I'm going to okay. write 10 sentences. Then I will give you five minutes again and you will find the mistake on the sentence. You are okay. going to tell me which is the mistake and then we are going to rewrite the sentence in the same space. Okay, thank you.
I will um, take the, the screen out for a moment. Just give me a second. Don't worry, I will uh, put again the screen, but I need to do something. So give me, give me a moment. So here we are again. Uh, we have the 10 sentence. So I will give you again your five minutes to find the uh, mistakes in this sentence. Then when we have completed the five uh, minutes, I'm going to ask you uh, what are the mistakes? And then we are going to write the correct sentence. So. The time begins now and you have five minutes to find the mistakes.
correct the sentence. I'm going to write the correct sentence like this. For the first one, my bed is more big than my desk. What is the correct uh, form of the adjective? Bigger. Good. Bigger. So in this case, my bed is bigger than my desk. And we are going to mark the error that in this case is more big. And we are doing in red. Then number two, Usain Bolt can run fast than me. What is the correct adjective here? Faster. Good. Faster good faster so Osain ball can run faster than me and we have here the mistake number three you are most generous than my brother what is the correct form more generous more good oh. more in this case is more and we have here the mistake most <clears throat> number four What is the correct form of that adjective? Heavier, heavier, is heavier, heaviest. Heaviest. In this case, it's heavier. Santiago está riendo. De que te ríes, Santiago. So in this case, of all, of all my luggage, Mine is heaviest. So here is the mistake. Number five, Michelangelo said David is the more realistic statue I have ever seen. What is the most? Ah, it's most realistic. Must. Good. So yeah. we're going to copy this one and we're going to have it here but with the change must must realistic number seven the weather during the summer is the most hot than during the winter what is the correct form hotter good hotter hotter Okay, hotter is hotter than during the winter. Perfect. Number eight, but in this case, I need to mark this one. Number eight, Frank Ocean is the goodest musician of the decade what is the correct form best best in this case is the best frank ocean is the best musician of the decade okay we are going to mark this one because it is not correct. Number nine, the earth is closest to the moon than the sun. What is the correct form? Okay. In this case, we are going to change closest <laughs> for close. closer. Good, for, for closer. 
Como que soy niña close. <laughs> But you are learning, so that's the, the best part. You are learning is closer to the moon. Because in this case, it's comparing two things, the moon than the sun. In este caso, estamos comparando, así que tiene que ser ER at the end. Closest. And we have one more. That is the number 10. I mean, this one, what is the one that had another number? Nine. Yes, I think no. Yes, let me, nine. Let, me, let me take. Yes, but I nine. have 11. And I, I don't know why. So, ah, no. Wait, we are going to see. <laughs> nine. <laughs> you should always turn in your work because some points are best than no points. What is, is the change? Better. Good. The point? Better. In this case, it's better. Better. And we are going to change best for better. And we are going to mark best here. And we are going to see the number 10. Then in this case, it's number 10. But it appears like 11. It says the writing center in this greater resource for writing help on campus. What is the correct form of this adjective? It's the great. This one is going to change from greater to greatest. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. In this case, we're going to change this one. <clears throat> for this one. And we are going to mark the incorrect one. So in this case, we can see that uh, we have like uh, some details that we need to, to take into account when we are uh, like working with the adjective. So in this case is when we are working with the uh, comparative, remember that we can use, or in this case, we are going to use then. Cuando estemos con el comparativo, siempre va a haber un then entre los dos nombres que estamos comparando. When we are using the superlative, we are going to use the antes del adjetivo. El the va a ir antes del adjetivo que ya está en forma superlativa. Entonces, cuando nos encontremos, bueno, en este caso nos vamos a encontrar con eh, que la oración en muchos de los casos en comparativo, sí tiene bien marcada las dos cosas a las que se les está haciendo la comparación. En el caso del superlativo, es como, por ejemplo, el de las galletas, que veíamos el ejemplo de las galletas, no hay una comparación entre otras, sino que dice que las galletas de la abuela son the best, son las mejores. So, in that case, we are going to have the elements the and the adjective, or the adjective than the number. Entonces vamos a ver esos elementos y tenemos que ponerle like. Un poco de atención a esa parte para no confundirnos. Um, I was uh, thinking to uh, do another exercise, but I think it's not going to be like. We're not going to have a lot of time because we have just like three minutes, I guess, to complete the other uh, exercise. So in this case, we are not going to do it because I have like three or four exercises for today, but we are just going to do two exercises. And also because it's almost time to end the session. So I'm going to make like the review because we are going to end this topic today. And we are going to talk about another topic tomorrow. So for the end of this session, we are just going to make a little review and then we are going to end the session because we are going to have our time done. So in this case, we have the complete uh, information that we have about the adjective here. And yesterday we were talking about the formula that we have for the uh, sentence that we are going to use to create superlative and comparative sentence. For the comparative sentence, we have 
the noun plus the verb plus the comparative adjective plus then plus the noun. Tenemos ese, eh, esa fórmula donde vamos a escribir el nombre, el primer nombre que vamos a comparar o del que vamos a hacer la comparación, el verbo, que es el verbo to be en este caso, el adjetivo que vamos a utilizar para comparar, el then, y luego el otro nombre que va a ser el objeto de nuestra comparación. Para el superlativo, solo vamos a tener el nombre el verbo, que sigue siendo en este caso el verbo to be, porque es el que estamos utilizando, da plus el, el adjetivo que ya está en, en forma superlativa con el otro nombre que va a ser el otro objeto o los otros objetos con los que vamos a hacer como nuestra eh, categoría de quién es el mejor, el peor y todo eso. Then we were talking about uh, the categories of the adjectives. In this case, we were talking about one syllable adjectives in the case that we are going to add the endings or the suffix that are er for the comparative, est for the superlative. Then we have the two syllable adjectives. In this case, we are going to have more for comparative adjective and most for superlative adjective. And also with the three or more syllables, we have the same structure. And then we have the irregular adjectives that in this case is going to change the form of the adjective in comparative and in superlative. They are kind of different. And that's all the information that we have for the superlative and comparative adjective. And we are going to end this topic here. And also we are going to stop this session because it's time to say goodbye. And we are going to see each other tomorrow with the last day of this week number three. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. See you yeah. tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Good night. Good night.